Welcome to this week's episode of the World of Roofing podcast, hosted by John Kenny of Cotney's Attorneys and Consultants and Andrew Rowley of RoofMapping.com, where we will introduce you to a new roofing industry craftsman from around the world. All right, hello, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of the World of Roofing. Uh, again, I'm John Kenny with Cotney Attorneys and Consultants coming to you from Florida, USA. Uh, we have uh, my co-host and good friend, Andrew Raleigh, over there coming to you from, uh, I guess it's the afternoon over there now. We do the mornings yep. and split it. We, we love these uh, time zone changes. How are you doing, Andrew? Yeah, I'm doing good well, thank you. Yeah, it's a nice afternoon. Sun's out for once, which is Perfect. nice. Um, you know, we find England in the grips of maybe a new prime minister with the old cheese and wine gate. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that I find goes. it. I try, love following the uh, political scene over there in England. It's, it's almost as exciting as it is here in the, the U.S. or what's going on every day. So how, it, how it used to be. Definitely a lot of interesting things. <laughs> so that being said, we are honored to have an, our, our guest today, Luke McCormick with McCormick Partners. Luke, how are you? I'm good, John. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, John and Andrew. It's um, good to join you guys on the, the global stage of. The world of roofing um you know i've been following the videos you've been putting up the last one with Kay, and um yeah i look forward to getting on and sharing my story well there's no better time to start i'm going to kick it on over to you luke why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and mccormick partners and what you're doing in the industry yes yeah, certainly um straight into it then eh? um yeah definitely so um yeah again john like i sort of seen your background from starting and estimating and contracts management within a roofing company, got to that sort of COO level. And then now with, with Courtney, essentially being a consultant, a, a growth consultant for roofing businesses, um, you know, that's essentially what I consider myself as. Like I, I followed my family into the roofing industry and you know my purpose now is to help roofing businesses grow through the, the vehicle of recruitment. So um, you know, a, a lot in common there. We, we do have ambitions to cross the pond one day start recruiting in your side of the world. Um, just that you've started to come in and start consulting on our side, so that's great. Um, Andrew, good, good to meet you again. Obviously, we brought you on to our, our People Make Roofing campaign. And yeah. um, you know what I really resonated with you was that you're showing the roofing industry from a global scale um, with, with roof mapping um, and also giving a lot of value away, doing that for free and then getting clients for, for the design side. So I think that's a... It's a really smart, you know, valuable way to do things and um, to go on it and, and have a look at the roofing industry on a global scale. It's, it's pretty inspiring. Um, okay. So, yeah, um, my name is Luke McCormack. Thanks for the introduction, John. Um, I'm 27, um, the managing director of McCormack Partners. We are the only company in the UK um, that recruit exclusively into the roofing and cladding sector. And, um, you know, what we are trying to do is connect great employees with great companies and also inspire the younger generation um, to think bigger and consider roofing as a career path. Um, where I came from um, is a town called Hamilton. Um, so I'm, I came from Hamilton. My, my father, he came from Blantyre. And my mum came from Teasley. So these are, these are towns that are just on the outskirts of Glasgow. Okay, in Scotland. And what I'd like to do is just give you a bit of a, an authentic sort of background on myself and then tell you a bit about where we are now and what the plans are for the future. Um, so where I grew up um, in Hamilton, um, like I said, Hamilton is situated in the outskirts of Glasgow, which that represents 50% of the most impoverished areas in the UK. Um, so within that sort of poverty, when I've been growing up, growing up, um, you know, round about me, I've seen a lot of social ills and this sort of vicious cycle of poverty where, you know, it's it's depression, um, it's sort of drug taking, suicide in, in certain cases, and um, people that are just in pretty bad positions. Um, I've been pretty lucky. Um, I, I've been aware of these problems for a long time and I've seen people who you know, have maybe had the same ambitions as me to start their own business and be successful, but that sort of vicious cycle has sucked them up. Um, so that's sort of the place that I'm coming from. Um, I've sort of been 
very lucky to have people around me from an early age that have basically showed me the way. Um, I didn't always listen. So back when I was really young, um, we hung, I'd spent a lot of my time hanging around the scheme, which I suppose in, in the US, John, um, that's sort of seen as the hood. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was where a lot of the time that I was spending was there in the sort of young team. And it was all sort of, you know, fighting and, and madness. And there wasn't much ambitions or, or aspirations within that circle. Um, I've got a, I was able to dig out a photo earlier of me back when I think I was maybe about 14 um, when I was hanging around that area. And, you know, you can see that that's who I was back then. Um, so pretty different from the image of sort of who I am now. And um, basically, um, you know, that that's where I grew up. And off the back of sort of parents that I've got, um, that sort of then evolved me into who I am now. Um, so when I started in school, um, I was pretty rebellious, um, pretty boisterous sort of the class clown type of vibe. And that was uh, something that I thought at the time was a good thing. I did stay until school until sixth year, which is, is the last year of high school. And I wasn't allowed to go to my prom, um, basically because of my, my behavior during my time at school. The, the punishment that I was given was, I wasn't allowed to conclude my six years, my six years with my peers. Um, at that party. So what my sort of reaction to that was, um, was to go down to B&Q, which is kind of like Walmart, and then um, got a big industrial sized lock. And I went to the front gates of the school on my last day, and I locked everyone in. So that was all the teachers, all the school buses. And then I took the key and I threw it down a drain. <laughs> um, and that was how my, my school journey sort of ended. Um, that's a pretty authentic overview of the rebellious side that I had at that age. Um, it's don't get me wrong. have a little rebellious stage in you. So that's <laughs> what makes you grow in life. Well, I, absolutely. You're so right. And then, um, you know, don't get me wrong. It wasn't completely rebelling against all of school. Um, there were certain teachers that really I really did connect with, that really inspired me. Um, mainly business. It was business, drama, and history were my three favourite subjects. Um, I, I got hires. Um, I wanted to go through for higher English, but my teacher at the time didn't let me because she perhaps would have thought I would have brought down the, the school's overall grades, but I did get the highest, um, the highest sort of grade that I could have got for what she put me through because the sort of storytelling side of me did exist. Um, business, drama, history. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I've learned from those teachers and those subjects that have carried me through to where I am now, both in business and in personal development. Um, after I'd sort of left school, um, a lot of people that I knew, they were, maybe they maybe did have ambitions to have their own businesses, but they weren't legal businesses, you know. Um, a lot of people fell into dead-end jobs, they ended up on the, the brew. And a lot of people who you would expect could have went places, they didn't. And, you know, I put that very much down to the people that were around about them. Um, for me, um, when I left school, my mum was basically like, you need to get an apprentice, an apprenticeship. She, she wouldn't let me go out and hang around with my friends or do anything unless I got that apprenticeship. So. I've sort of spoke to a lot of my friends who are doing well or have got trades or they're in a good place in life. And what I sort of found was that the tipping point for them at the young age was one of their parents sitting them down and saying, you need to get this apprenticeship. Um, so because of my mum, I got a job at Barhead Travel. Now, Barhead Travel, um, as a travel management company at that time, had about three, 400 people within them. In the company and, and that that absolutely changed my life. Um, I've got a I've got a picture here of my first day um, at Barhead Travel. Um, and you can see me there, first time getting suited and booted. Um, really proud to sort of go to that work. So that guy um, had became that guy. <laughs> um, so that was that was brilliant for me because 
within Barhead Travel, the majority of the company um, dealt with public people that were traveling, whereas I was in the business travel division. So I was sort of instantly put on the front lines and I was taught the importance of the client, the importance of customer service, business acumen. I was doing business development. I got a few key accounts. And, you know, within Barhead Travel, um, we done a, a modern apprentice. And the modern apprenticeship that I done was business and admin. And I was the fastest person in the company's history to complete their apprenticeship. Um, so I was then given another one, which is in business management. Um, so that was very much the tipping point to sort of propel me into the next stage of my life. Um, in Barhead Travel, as well as sort of learning how to treat clients, the importance of customer service, um, I was taught a lot about how the cogs and the machines work. There were so many different departments in this company. And I realized how they all sort of interact with each other and how the machine works with all these cogs going together. Um, so yeah, it was at that stage that I really screwed the head. And, you know, I was sort of walking from my house to the train station with my suit on, a lot of pride and, you know, a career was something that I took a lot of pride in. Pride in. And, you know, my friends sort of looked up to me because of it. And, you know, it probably changed a lot of their minds in terms of what they wanted out of their lives. Um, so it was after that that I then um, fell into recruitment. So my father, he was um, he was getting interviewed by um, a recruiter. And he'd say to him, you know, my son would probably like your world. You should you should meet him. So um, I had a went to a place in Glasgow called Patisserie Valerie. I had to sit down with a recruiter, had a cake and a cup of coffee. And um, this guy told me about his friend that was starting that had a startup agency. And it just sounded amazing to me. So um, I went and um, met with his friend, the managing director at that time, and the other owner, um, and interviewed in front of both of them. I remember when I was getting the train to the interview and I had all, all my notes prepared, you know, everything I wanted to get across to them. And um, I'd, I'd actually made like a, a fake LinkedIn profile where I could go and connect with all the other employees in the business. Mm -hmm. So my first day I walked in, I was like, all right, how are you doing? Rind off his background to him, say the same thing. And they were like, how do you, how do you know me? <laughs> so it was, a, it was a good laugh in there. And then when I sat down, one of the MDs said to me, says, look, I think you're good, but I'll need to bounce you off every single wall in here for you to do well. And then the other one says, you know, I, I think you're perfect for this. So they both offered me the job on the spot. Um, I, I didn't ex accept it straight away because I had another um, job offer there from the biggest travel management company in the world. And the contract and the benefits package was, was like that size. Um, the basic salary was a lot higher, whereas with the startup, the contract was basically, you know, I had, I had no rights, <laughs> you know, no rights, no benefits. But what I did have was fire in my belly about recruitment. So what I eventually done was I took the, I took the lower offer of the two, um, the risky option. And at that point, my dad, who had obviously suggested recruitment, he was saying to me, you know, don't take that route take the, the stable opportunity, the big company, the big benefits package. And that's what you need to do. So was a lot of other people. Whereas my mum, she could see that I had fire in my belly about this and it was something I wanted to do. And she that's what she said to me. She says, go forward with the thing that's sort of giving you the most light. Um, so alas, I, I, I joined recruitment and instantly I, I fell in love with recruitment. I was a bit of the an underdog in the business that I was in. I was the youngest person in the business by far. And, you know, what I loved about it was that from day dot, I could be contacting managing directors, CEOs, sales directors, and actually consult with them about how they can grow their company um, with the supply of specialist staff members. I could also be phoning, you know, a really high value candidate who maybe wasn't on the market looking for a move, but then I, if I presented them with the information correctly, I could show them how this opportunity can not just benefit their life, their family's life, but, you know, just be such a positive step for them. And then when 
that candidate then accepts that job, the sort of pride that I got from it was it was unreal. And um, we used to always do competitions in the business as well. And the competitions were, some of them was just who's been on the phone the most. And I would always sort of win these competitions. And what I put that down to was sort of having that, that underdog mentality, having something to prove, which is still sort of kind of the case, which, which I'll come back to. Um, after a while, it was getting to the stage where there wasn't much vision for where the company was going. I was in the office at 8 a.m., which isn't that early for roofers, I get that, but for office workers, it can be pretty early. Um, but I was staying to 8 o'clock at night, and then when I would go home, I'd be sitting on my bed with my laptop, making my business development list for the night days, making my to-do list, and I was uh, completely committed. Um, it, it got to the stage where um, the owners of the business were maybe coming in at half 10, leaving at half 3, I could sort of feel that they sort of fell out of love with the, the sort of hustle a wee bit. But the great thing for me at this stage was that in the previous company, I'd seen how all the cogs in the machine work. And with this company, I realised the daily slog that it took to get a startup off the ground. So that was brilliant for me at such a young age to see both sides of the coin. Um, and then after a while, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I could start my own business. And it was something that, to be honest, I didn't have the confidence to do it. I thought, you know, I can't do this. I'm, I'm not good enough for this. I just sort of had some limiting beliefs in me that, that it wouldn't work. And it was actually my, my friendship circle at the time who says to me, you know, look, like, remember who you are. Like, you can do this. Like, you should do it. Take the leap. Take the step. So I did. Um, my car at the time was a, a Mini Cooper. And um, my mum and dad had bought me that for my, my birthday. And um, what I done was I, I sold the car and I moved into um, to Byers Road in Hillhead in Glasgow, paid off the rent for like nine months or so, and then started the business. So I'll show you my, my first ever set of business cards. Um, that's them there. So the business was called Recruitment Scotland. And that was basically just me sitting myself um, at the table, a laptop and a phone, hustling with the market, drumming up business, and you know trying to get things moving. So, um, what you can see on one side of that is Glasgow, the other side is Edinburgh. Um, but the first few invoices that I was sending out, it was for work that we were doing down in London. As you know, when you start a business, you take anything you can get, um, and it was for one of the if not the largest construction material supplier in Europe. Everybody in the roofing industry in the UK and Europe will know who this brand is. Um, so because of that, we, we've done a rebrand and Recruitment Scotland became McCormack Partners. Um, I've just sort of noticed there as well that on that business card it says people make Glasgow and obviously now we've got the show people make roofing. So we've sort of stayed true to our, our roots on that, which is, is quite nice to see. Um, after I started uh, Cormac Partners, things were really starting to, to take off. I tried to take on a few members of staff who they were just there for the money. Um, I couldn't trust them. And both of my first two employees had sort of done the dirty on me and, and, and it hadn't worked out. So it was at that point that I realised that the most important aspect of business is trust. Now I would say it's trust and communication. Mm -hmm. um, so what I decided to do was, um, I was very lucky to be able to do this, um, but I decided that it would be a good move to hire my mum into the business. Now, my mum, she was obviously the person that made me get that apprenticeship, that pushed me into recruitment. And she was at a stage where the business that she was in was just sucking up all her good energy. Um, it was sort of ruining her health a wee bit. She completely fell out of love with it. And she was really excited at the prospect of joining the Cormac Partners. So uh, me being the Cormac, the partners being the client. Um, I then I got a, a loan through Transmit Startups for about 15 grand. And then I used that money to hire my mum and get a good proper office. Um, so that's when things started. Um, got a photo there of me and my mum. Um, in the early days 
back when I had hair for the stresses of recruitment took over. <laughs> um, but you can see us there, the purples and come the colours. And um, mm -hmm. you know, at that stage it was it was me and my mum very much sort of hustling with the market. Um that was brilliant for me because what my mum brought to the table was um she was obviously wise and she had so much more life and business experience that I needed behind my young shoulders at that time. My mum was as degree qualified. She went to university um, when I was born after being in the bank for like 24 years. So I was born, she was doing insurance sales during the day and then studying for her degree at night time. And then she worked in, for about 15 years, she worked in employability, which is basically helping people get jobs that can't get jobs themselves. And um, what I've been able to achieve through McCormack Partners since that time is, you know, it's something that I'm very proud of. And McCormack Partners then naturally became a business that specialised only recruiting into the roofing and cladding sector. And the reason for that is um, my father, he used to have his own contracting business, joinery, um, and then he got into specification sales within roofing. Mm -hmm. So basically, my dad has been doing roofing and cladding for 30 years. My mum had been doing recruitment for 15. So you know, you can argue that I was sort of born to do roofing and cladding recruitment. Um, so it, it was a brilliant setup because from an early day, like my dad, he'd sort of showed me with pride some of the projects that he'd specified, such as the, the Scottish Parliament. And he'd also brought home, you know, all his materials. When I was looking outside my bedroom window, there was a green roof on the garage. We had Spanish slate on the roof. And they would explain to me, you know, what a bitumen felt roof is and seen insulation and stuff. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it. But now when you start recruiting for companies, I realise I've had those seeds in me for such a long time. So I, I essentially followed my dad into the roofing industry. Um, and from an early day, I, I really knew that there was something about the industry that, you know, there must be something here. So we sort of found a niche with McCormack Partners. And, you know, it's... It's been great um, for myself. Like I want to inspire other people. And through the vehicle of my combat partners, I've been able to do that. I've been able to disrupt the market slightly. Um, and I've also been able to sort of change the views of a recruitment agency. Um, you know, I find that basically there, there's sometimes not a lot of trust of recruitment consultancies. Um, you know, people think they're just throwing rubbish at the wall and seeing what sticks and we've been able to sort of you know not only try and inspire the younger generation to join the industry um but also try and change that view um after i brought my mum into the business um we got a lot of help from a guy called david Groom. um i'd met david through networking throughout the industry and um david has basically i'd reached out to david to ask him to come into the office to train my mum and I on on the roofing industry with more in depth than what my dad had taught me in the early days. So what I was then getting taught was the difference between a new the new build arena, the refurb arena, yeah. you know, the, all the different roles within a contract and business, the difference between a manufacturer who's got you know premium systems or one who maybe competes on price, um, you know what a site looks like from the ground up, from supervisors, estimators, um, designers, and all the sort of, the key components that makes a contract and the manufacturing, the supply business tick. For us, that was like the, the aha moment, because then whenever you speak to a client on the phone, they're like, you know, I've, I've never met a, a recruiter who's got this type of knowledge. Um, so that, that really helped us, and that's when we started to sort of go into the map. Um, what I was also doing at that stage is David was speaking at universities and that had sort of inspired me to start speaking at schools. So what you can see here, um, so that's me at um, Bellhurst Academy in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And what I was doing here was teaching all these school kids about the roofing industry and, you know, where roofing and construction can take them. And they didn't know, you know, one of the boys says to me, I want to be a roofer which was amazing. And for myself to look back at like, you know, that guy who was wanted to be the class clown, 
to you know this guy standing in front of the class, teaching them, educating them, inspiring them. You know that that was a massive moment for me. And you know what else happened around about the same time as that partnership was. Um, I had been speaking at industry events about the roofing industry. Um, I think I've got, yeah, I've got another image here. So that was a Scotland build. Um, my chat was called State of the UK Roofing Industry. And I was basically showing that, you know, people don't know the money that people can make in roofing. They don't know about the career progression that they can take. And now with our campaign, we're able to get across, you know, the personalities that are in the industry. So at that point, um, a lot of marketing stuff came up. So I'd done the government's No Wrong Path campaign um, when everyone had basically um, just finished school and got their results to show people that you don't need to go to university to be successful. Right. My story was basically that you don't need to go to university. If you've got that passion, you've got that energy, you're ethical, and you're, if you can be inquisitive, you know, that, that can really take you anywhere. So that was the sort of story um, that I'd put out there. And within this, I've got, since that time, the business has grown um, to basically, we've quadrupled the size. We've got almost 10 employees now. We've got nationwide coverage. Um, we only work retained, which means that we only work with clients that truly partner with us and pay you know, a deposit in advance. And you know, I know that we're the only company in this sector that have got the type of knowledge that we have. Um, that's a photo of David, myself, and um, my good friend, Brian, who's now a part of the business at the, the NFRC's Roofing Awards. That's Julie, who's part of the business. Um, me, me, and, me and Brian again, and we've got a, a few more images there. Um, but through this business, you know, I've been able to, build a platform where I can bring, you know, my friends onto the journey with me, my family onto the journey with me. I've got clients that, you know, we've seen them triple their turnover over the time that we've been working with them. We've been competing against some of the largest agencies out there and we've, you know, we've, we've bet them in certain instances. And, you know, it's, it's just been an amazing journey. I'm really, really proud of the, the sort of accolades that we've, we've won through this industry and how it sort of changed me as a person as well. Um, I've got a, an image here, and this was a few years ago where I was over on, over on your side of the world, John. I was over in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was in Las Vegas, I was offered a job. Um, it was like an insurance consultant business. And the, it was a big contract. My first month of training was going to be in Miami. Um, I, I moved over there for a week and I met all the members of the business. I met all the suppliers and everything was there on a plate. What I originally thought I wanted from business, the glitz and the glamour and, you know, money and all this. And then when I got it handed to me on a plate, I realised this isn't what I want. Um, I realised how much my value system had changed since the business started to where it was then. And I realised that what I wanted to do is is what we're doing now is, you know, using this vehicle to inspire others, to, you know, give back to family and friends, to the industry that's given us to this position. Mm -hmm. And um, it was such a nice moment to realise that what I thought was my dreams um, isn't. And, you know, it's about growing an ethical recruitment consultancy and having a business that I can then pass down to my kids. That's you know, that's where the real blitz and glamour is for me now. Um, and, you know, if I had accepted that offer, I wouldn't be working with my family. I wouldn't be working with my friends. I wouldn't be on the, the global stage like we are right now because of this business. Um, and there's, there's a few other things that I'm, that I'm really proud of. Um, the, the NFRC, for example. So the National Federation of Roofing Contractors is the most governing body within the roofing industry. And if you look at the NFRC, you look at recruitment, there's only one business that is in there who is a recruitment um, supplier. And, you know, that's a very proud moment for me. Mm -hmm. um, the NFRC, you know, they, they have been lobbying government. They've built careers hubs. They're educating parents. They're educating the younger generation. Um, they're educating 
you know, the education system on why roofing is good. And the sort of new regime of the NFRC where people like James, Philip, Pip, Ruth, Steve, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of the NFRC and to see what they're doing. And for us to sort of mirror their work through our campaign um, is, is something that, you know, I'm, I'm really happy about. Um, my, my sort of strategy to grow the business has been um, basically um, to grow a bit of a personal brand um, within the niche. And the way that we've done that is, one, to sort of show that we can be trusted, and two, just to get myself in front of the client base, um, is we've done, you know, a bit of a partnership with Roofing Today, where you'll see this month that we've got there, we've got myself in the front cover, and um, a bit cheesy, but... <laughs> um, you know, that's me putting myself out there. Something that oh, Andrew's got a coffee there. I love it. <laughs> and what we've been doing here is advising, you know, candidates on if they want to take a side step or a step forward with their career. You know, this this is everything that you can do. And um, we're just trying to give value back to the industry. Um, the first sort of one that I put out was um, it was in September there, and. Um, what would sort of put in these articles was just basically showing people, like there's me in front of Scottish Parliament, where you know my dad specified that it's the pride I've got for the industry. Um, that's David and I speak with James and Philip um, before we joined the NFRC about our campaign, people make roofing, and what we're trying to achieve with that. So obviously me speaking about the roofing industry at schools, and then me again on stage. So. Basically, everything that I've ever wanted to inspire, to make a difference, to, to motivate, and obviously to grow as a person. I've got all this through the roofing industry, right. which, you know, if you told me 10 years ago that was going to happen, I, I would not believe you. And we've been very lucky to have a lot of people from the industry get behind our, our People Made Roofing campaign. So you can see here um, some of the people who've been involved. Um, Kate, as well as Mo, who, who works for SPV, Alex, Mark, Colin, Aman, Phil, Chris, Andy, Phil, Claire, James, David, Philip, Jeremy, Rob, Robert, Jonathan, and Sarah. And, and these people have, you know, they've selflessly taken time out of their diary. Um, and yourself as, as well, Andrew, um, there's a few more images to get put on that. Um, these people have sort of taken time out of their diary to get behind the campaign and basically help us change the image from, you know, dirty old roofer to these are actually the people within the industry. And, you know, you've got people like, like Phil, for example, who, you know, he started as a roofer and he's got himself to such a successful stage with successful business at Central, made a lot of money, he's in a great position. And it shows that, you know, people that think roofing doesn't pay, roofing doesn't have stability, well, that shows that it does. Um, you've got people like Claire Fenton, who Claire started on a council estate. She's now the co-inventor of, of an innovative system. That's the roofing industry that's got her there. Um, you know, Kate is like, you know, an absolute ambassador for any woman in the roofing industry. You know, what she does with running SPV is, is amazing. A brilliant client of ours. Um, Sarah, for example, you know, Sarah got into the roofing industry through her international marketing degree. And people just don't realize that these paths exist. So what we're doing is shining a light on other people. And then we're cutting up all these interviews to share them with schools, colleges, and universities across the UK um, so that we can inspire the next generation to join. And, you know, that's exactly what this is for me. It's a vehicle where I can take other people on the journey with me to sort of do good. And, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to, to sort of be here and I'm, I'm looking forward to see what happens next. And, you know, hopefully I'll be, be on your side of the world soon, John. <laughs> good. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's yeah. basically myself and my journey in a nutshell. And then- um, It was a great story. journey, great, great story you shared uh, with us, Luke. Um, was uh, amazing, you know, I think most of our listeners out there can relate to that starting out at the, you know, like we all do starting at the bottom and you, you've built something great and 
you have the passion like the rest of us for giving back to the industry, which is what we need more and more of today. Um, we are coming to the end, though. We, we've actually gone over time for our listeners, but it was uh, um, absolutely a great, um, great story to share, and I'm glad we took the time to do it. So is there any uh, closing? Re- we have to wrap it up. Is there any closing remarks at all, Luke, that you have? Um, um, no, to be honest, uh, this is the first time that I've ever done an interview speaking about myself and our journey. So I'm just glad to sort of get it out there. It's, you know, the authentic journey of me myself, where I've came from to where I am now. And, um, you know, there, there will be more like publications and videos to come out. So, you know, I just want to change that image of recruiters a yeah. bit and let people know that there is ethical recruiters out there, care about the industry they're in, that they want to do good. So, um, you know, just share it far and wide. Um, guys, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Well, thank you. It was fantastic uh, having you as our guest on this episode. Uh, Andrew, any closing uh, remarks from you? No, I, I just think, Luke, I mean, I, I literally fell into the roofing industry, but once you're in the roofing industry, you sort of just stay there because there is so many different variations you can move within it. Um, yeah. You know, I've, got, I've come from a designer background. I'm now trying to set up this website to, to promote the, the actual physical work that people do on the roofs because I I can't do it and I just think it looks amazing so yeah I'll, I'll show it Luke can tell them how much they can make from it and you know I think between us all we can really get people back in or into the mm-hmm. industry so we can get that next generation going on it definitely absolutely yeah. that's the uh, that's the goal of the show to share great stories like this and yeah. continue to promote the roofing industry around the world and um, I think we're doing a good job of it today was a great uh, time having you on it was a fantastic interview great story I'm glad you had a chance to share it all with us Um, At that being said, I want to thank uh, Andrew, my co-host, and Luke for being the guest this month. And everybody out there, we uh, look forward to uh, hearing back from you. We love your comments. Thank you for supporting us. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Cheers, bye.